Imagine that you're sitting at home with your family, enjoying a nice meal. Suddenly, you hear a knock at the door. You answer it, and there stands a very strange creature. Its flesh is nearly hairless and covered in slick grease. Its paws are topped with multi-jointed digits that move in strange and intricate ways, dexterously manipulating some object that you don't quite recognize. Suddenly, that object is impaled in your neck and you fall to the ground. As you lie there bleeding, you turn and watch as a group of these creatures rush into your home, slaughtering your family with elegant efficiency and speed. You watch as the invaders begin to settle in, creating nests of amazing size and complexity. Clearly, this is their home now. Before you lose consciousness, you turn back and look at the road the invaders traveled on to get to your home. You gaze in horror as you realize that the homes of all your neighbors have already been invaded. Everything of value has either been taken or destroyed, and now the community is unrecognizable, a barren shell of its former self. The creatures I'm talking about, of course, are us. Homo sapiens, human beings, big-brained apes with long legs and keen sight, building nests of steel and concrete, creating huge communities, swimming with life like a coral reef. But unlike a reef, where organisms of all kinds come together for mutual benefit, our concrete reefs push other organisms out to the ruin of anything that is not human. Unless, of course, a particular organism can be enslaved for our use. Like a virus hijacking the genome of its host cell in order to redirect the cell's machinery to its own ends, we redirect the evolutionary course of some organisms for our, our personal use. So we turn a swift horse into an organic automobile, or turn a mighty bear into a demeaning performance piece. Maybe Agent Smith was right all along. Maybe our species is more like a virus than a mammal. Then again, one of the most unique properties of Homo sapiens is our ability to consciously take control of our own evolutionary course. If enough of us decide that we'd rather not be so virus-like, there's a very real chance that we could become like something else. But what? What other force in nature is so powerful and invasive yet does not leave desolation in its wake? Rather than prove Agent Smith right, maybe we should take the Bruce Lee approach and be like water. Imagine if humanity could be more like a river. We'd still push forward and of course nothing would be able to halt our progress. But instead of destroying the environment, a river adapts to its landscape flowing around obstacles and filling in the cracks and crevices as it goes along until it's as natural a part of the environment as the ground and the air. We'd still have an effect on the environment, of course, like a river can slowly erode the ground into a totally new landscape. But it does so gradually, at a rate that is manageable for the surrounding plants and animals. And this is truly at the heart of being in unity with nature. After all, things always change, and always will be changing. But it's the way that change occurs that determines whether we destroy an ecosystem or whether we're simply another part of its evolution. We need to realize that as living organisms, we are not simply beings living within an environment. We are a part of the environment as well. If we contribute to our environment's destruction, we are contributing to our own destruction. If we encourage the flourishing of life, we encourage the flourishing of our own lives. If we take care of the Earth, the Earth will take care of us. If we don't take care of it, well, the Earth will turn out just fine and dandy in the end. It's the organisms living on its surface that will face obliteration, and that happens to include us. So forget about saving the Earth. It's us who are in need of saving. Unfortunately, no one is coming to rescue us. If we want to escape the fate that we've imposed on so many other species, we have to figure it out for ourselves. We can pray to whatever gods we fancy, we can blame whichever groups we happen to be angry with at the time, but ultimately the burden of finding solution falls on the shoulders of the very same species that is supplying the problem. And so here we find ourselves, at the most important crossroads in our young species' short history. Two paths are set before our feet. One leads us further down the path of suffering and death that we've already started down. The other path leads us to something else something potentially wonderful, something that has never before been seen in this planet's five billion year history. What that something is, is difficult to say. I think whatever the future holds, it will either be far more wonderful or far more horrifying than anything we can imagine. The question is, what path will we end up taking? Before we can answer that question, first there's an even more fundamental question that each of us has to ask ourselves. What path will I take? 
Each of us is like a single droplet of water, powerless on our own. But when enough droplets come together and begin moving as one, suddenly we got ourselves a river. <laughs>